Good evening and welcome. I'm Dr. Will Miller. I'm a therapist and a comedian, and my wife Sally and I are proud citizens of Lafayette. And I've had the pleasure over the past decade to serve in addition as the chaplain for Lafayette Police Department. And so tonight, it is my pleasure to host the public community meeting regarding the new public safety building and parking garage the city of Lafayette is planning between 5th and 6th streets along Columbia Street in downtown Lafayette, an exciting event. Tonight's meeting will guide you through the city's process to construct the new facility, and you'll hear from a panel that is leading the project. We have set the stage and seating here at the Long Center for Proper Social Distancing, uh, following county health and safety guidelines for our panelists and staff. With public interest in this project, we have many opportunities, all of us have many opportunities for the public to view this online, the City of Lafayette's Facebook page, YouTube channel, and a special Zoom room for viewing of this meeting and plans. Tonight's agenda will include our mayor and chief of police setting the future vision for Lafayette. We will also hear a presentation offered by our design team with opportunities to react in real time to some of the images that we will share. Lastly, we will close with an exciting Q&A session with our panelists. Please plan to submit your questions in chat function in Zoom, and we will have more reminders as the evening evolves. But let's get started. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the mayor of Lafayette, Mr. Tony Roszworski, who will share his vision for the project and introduce our special, our special guests that are with us tonight. Mayor. Well, thank you, Dr. Will, and thank you to each and every one of you that are joining us here tonight. We certainly wish that we were able to all be together uh, to have a very interactive dialogue and uh, share uh, this vision that we're creating. But uh, we're, we're glad to be able to do this with you because we feel it's important uh, at this stage in the project that we get information out. Because what my part tonight, I really want to stress upon you is it's not just a building. We're here tonight to talk about a vision, a vision for the Lafayette Police Department, a vision for public safety in our community, the way that we be able to define the relationship that we want to continue to build between each and every one of us that makes this community strong, that makes this community a welcoming place, that makes this a community where we all want to live. And to do that, it takes lots of things, and it takes lots of people working together to make that happen. And as we build this new structure, and as we, we incorporate the things in it that we believe are necessary, we truly want your input. And that's why we're here tonight. That's why we're doing this early in the process. So there is time for us to get those things done, to get those things right that makes this more than a building, that makes it a community gathering space, that makes it a place where relationships can be built, where law enforcement and police officers and the community and those people that need help and those people that want to help build the future can come together in a way that we've not been able to do before. And you do have to have the right type of building, the right type of technology, the right type of amenities to make that possible because we want to achieve some very important things. One, we want to give our police officers every tool that they need to, one, go home safe each night to their families, and to, two, to keep us all safe here in this community. We also want to look at the way that we police and how can we change some of the dynamics so that we can serve all of our constituents better. So one of the things we're going to, you'll hear about tonight is how we'll use technology and how we'll be able to use technology in this building and the flow of the building to actually reduce the administrative work our police officers are doing, we hope, by about 50%. Now, what are we going to do with that time? 
We want to now be able to take that time to do what we think the community expects of us. We'll have divisions set up or we'll have people set up that will have the time to work differently with people with mental illness. We'll have the resources to work differently with people with addictions. Our officers will have more time to be out in the Boys and Girls Club, Hannah Center, working with our schools and different organizations to build those community relationships that bring us together, that allow them to do their job more effectively, that allow you to become part of the solutions that help keep our community safe. You know, the reality is we'd never be able to hire enough people to actually do that. But if we can use this building and we can use technology that you're going to hear about to take 100 officers in patrol and free up 50% of their time to do new activities to help people to reach out, I think we've actually found that balance between having the resources that the officers and the police department need and being able to do those activities above and beyond just enforcement that the community wants and expects from us, and we want to be able to deliver that uh, to this community. So I'm very excited about where this will take us, not just now, but 10, 20, 30 years in the future, a building that will allow us to continue to grow, to build relationships, to bring people into the building, to have community rooms where interactions and relationships can be built that quite frankly we've never been able to do in the past. And so I am very excited about what this means for our community, for our officers, for our citizens, for those people that are in need and need our help. Tonight really is a new beginning and this is the vision that we want to create and then be able to implement in the coming years. But we do need your help. We do need to, your help in building those bridges, building those relationships, giving us input about the building. So when we're done with all of this, from the building to the programming, to the processes, to the relationship, we have something very, very special in this community. We all know Greater Lafayette always rises to challenges. We find ways to work together. We find ways to get things done. And we find ways to achieve our goal as a community. So thank you uh, for joining us tonight. It is important. We can't do it without you. Uh, we've always said that. And tonight is the first step in a large process that I believe is going to bring tremendous rewards to this community. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you the Chief of the Lafayette Police Department, Patrick Flannelly. Thank you, Mayor. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight to uh, talk about this new project, this exciting new project that's going to bring us into the future. It, it really is uh, uh, one of these pinnacles in time that uh, hopefully when we look back, we'll realize that uh, we, we made the, the leap into the future and, and we're going to do it in a way uh, that no one else has done before. So we have a a video that we're going to show here in just a moment and uh, before that there's there's a quote that I, that I always like to read in public presentations and that is the police are the public and the public are the police the police are the only members of the public who are paid to give full-time attention to the duties that are incumbent upon every citizen in the interest of community welfare and existence and that was Robert Peel uh, in 1829 and um, that, that statement, 200 years old, still rings true today. And it's one of the things that's been the hallmark of, of our police department for the last 10 years, is really trying to build the relationships uh, with our community and do it in a way that creates synergy for, for all of us. Um, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth, and I'm gonna, uh, we're going to show you a, a slide with a little animation in a moment. Uh, but before that, 
we've, we've got a video that I'd like to show you that really kind of tells the story that sometimes words just, words just can't explain. So with that, we'll... We're gonna get one shot. This ought to be a 50-year building. Having the right facility as, you know, sets the right tone for our community and our priorities. This facility will put us at the forefront of policing in America. If you look at the current police department, it kind of looks like a shell with stone around it. In 1995, the Lafayette Police Department moved into our current facility, which used to be City Hall. You know, quite a bit of time has passed and we've grown. In 1995, we had just under 80 sworn police officer positions. Fast forward 25 years later, we're double that number. There's simply not enough room. It's not laid out properly. The facility just wasn't designed from the ground up to be a police department. It's hard to create that synergy even among divisions with the separation that we have. It's very compartmentalized. We need more office space, we need more space for evidence. Our shower facilities are inadequate. The exercise facilities are really small and old. Our dispatchers are literally down in a basement where they have no natural light whatsoever. Which is just not very conducive to a good working environment. Another important thing to take into consideration is how information is at the core of everything that we do. If we can get better information sooner and we can make sense of it, then we can act on it. It's very difficult to do that with disjointed old information systems and in a building that's not conducive to interaction and information flow. We've done a good job in the facilities that we have. It really is time for us to to upgrade. Our employees deserve that and our community deserves that. The Lafayette Public Safety Building, it's more than just a police station. What we're really hoping for is that we can create a nice centerpiece for the downtown area. And we also want a facility that's welcoming, a facility that says to the community, come on in. Well, it'll be a multi-story building up to 70,000 square feet. The building is being designed with a lot of glass that let a lot of natural light in. We want this building to also be one where people walk by and go, oh wow. The new public safety facility is going to be built where our existing parking lot stands today on the corner of Columbia and 6th Street. We're also building a new downtown parking facility. Part of that will obviously be used by the police department. It'll be about a 500 space facility. We can help the police department with their parking needs. We can help our downtown merchants. We can help all of our citizens that come down to participate in all of our downtown activities. We're hoping to break ground at the end of March 2021. And the construction will be all of 2021 and for the most part all of 2022. We're looking in that somewhere probably in that $45 million range between the entire project. Currently, we're looking for as much feedback as we can get to ensure that we don't miss anything in, in this process. The public will get to look at some of the first drafts, and we also want their input. We're excited about that synergy that it's gonna create and our ability to provide the very best services to our community in the short term and moving well into the future. Having a department that can recruit the highest and best officers, those officers come to a great work environment every day and have the tools and resources that they need to effectively do their job and to safely do their jobs. We all win. We win from seniors to kids, from businesses uh, to individuals. We all win when we have a safe community and we have the resources needed to keep it that way. So the next, the next slide we're gonna show is, is a little bit of an animation that talks about some of the growth that we've experienced, uh, not just in Lafayette, but in Tippecanoe County. And while expansion uh, is, is a great thing, uh, it, it provides the opportunity to keep Lafayette moving forward. As a police chief and as a police officer, we see this expansion in a couple of different ways. And the one that, that we're really concerned about tonight is, is the demand that that places on the services for public safety and, and our resources. 
increased population, increased uh, growth leads to uh, increased calls for service and the request for service on, on our police department. And we all know f crime fluctuates over time uh, for a lot of different reasons, but we also know that it's, it, it can be easy to predict some of these trends based on population growth and, and just these expansions. So for example, if we look at our data from 1995, um, which was the year that I started at the Lafayette Police Department, uh, we were housed in, in that new facility. We just opened it up um, with eight, about 80 police officers and 25,000 square feet. When you fast forward to today, we have 150 sworn police officers and almost 200 total employees working inside that facility. Uh, we've had to make a lot of adjustments over the years and those adjustments have worked, but we've just run out of space. Calls for service in 1995, when you talk about part one crimes and part two crimes, I won't go into the UCR stuff, but just as an example, just to, to, to illustrate where we've been, we had 3,237 3, part one crimes and about 55,000 total calls for service. In 2000, that number was 2,967 and about 60,000 calls for service. Move into 2005, it was 3,538 Part 1 crimes and about 65,000 calls for service. 2010, 2993 with about 70,000 calls for service. So we're starting to see that trend where the calls for service are really starting to outpace our part one crime. So what that tells us is that we're being asked to do things that we hadn't been asked to do before and the demand on our services has been increasing. In 2015, where we, we hit our peak in our part one crimes, where we had 3,803 part one crimes and those include uh, our, our major crimes. So in that year, four homicides, 52 rapes, 96 robberies, 319 aggra aggravated assaults, 680 burglaries, uh, 2,400 larcenies, 229 auto thefts, 18 arson, with approximately 90,000 calls for service. Uh, if you also remember, 2015 is the year with great support from Mayor Rozworski and our city council that we initiated several new programs which included expanding our community outreach, uh, increasing our, the numbers uh, on our street crimes unit, our drug task force, and our investigative division. In 2016, our total numbers, our part one crimes dropped all the way down to 3,386, but our calls for service were still continuing to climb. So now we are at 100,000 calls for service. Uh, this is the year that we also had our peak in robberies where we uh, were at 110 robberies. So the good news was is that we were starting to see the trends go in the, dire in the direction that we wanted because some of the strategies that we had employed. So in, in, if you move into 2019, our part one crimes were at 2,747, which were numbers below 1995, historically no, low numbers. Uh, and our robberies were down to 55. So we were able to cut our robberies in half in just that four year period based on the strategies that we have implemented uh, with our police department. Amazing, but we still were climbing in our calls for service where we were hit a record high of 108,000 CAD calls for service in 2019. So we could still see that trend going. Things were going in the right direction, um, but the calls were still coming. And, and I think that we all see that in our daily lives about why that's occurring. And this is something that we hope to address moving forward into the future. So how do we do this? We do this by working smarter. We looked at our data and instead of chasing numbers, we focused on core issues and then we dedicated the correct resources to the problem at the earliest possible time. We did this by increasing our outreach to the community, asking for you to tell us what you were seeing and how it was affecting you. This allowed us to focus our attention on where it needs to be. 
And once we heard from you, we looked at our information, we focused our resources, and we attacked these issues. But there is still much work to be done. It's time now to double down on our efforts. Ultimately, we are in the information business. The better the information we receive, the sooner we can act upon it. This allows us to be problem solvers and to solve problems sooner, which helps us free up resources later, which the mayor mentioned when he was speaking. It drives value for our services and makes our community safer. So how will this building help us do that? By modernizing our physical space, integrating it with cutting edge technology, and pairing it with highly trained and dedicated police officers, we will endeavor to turn the corner from being a reactive police force to a proactive police force that looks to increase the value for our services and how we provide it to you. We'll do this by transitioning to a modern CAD and RMS system, which will maximize our use of information, and we'll do this in partnerships with our community stakeholders. So 2020 has been a difficult year. Uh, the scrutiny on law enforcement is at an all-time all high. Um, you know, and while our numbers are moving in the right direction, violent crime across the, across the country is up. Homicides uh, have reached uh, record proportions in numbers that we haven't seen to the, since the 1970s. And, and Lafayette has not been spared some of those issues, and everything is proportionate. So while we're proud of the progress that we've made, we know that we have work to do moving into the future, and we are really hopeful that with this project and with the support of all of our community stakeholders and our community that we're going to take this and we're going to lead not just the state of Indiana but the country in progressive policing and do it in a way that will make all of you proud. So thank you again for, for being here. And now I'd like to turn it back over to our presenter, Dr. Miller. Thank you, Mayor Rosworski, and thank you, Chief. Uh, what an incredible and sobering review that was. I would urge everyone uh, to take the time to listen to this because the officials in the city have heard these, uh, this, this presentation before internally, but here's a way to get your head around and your mind around where we have come from and where we are now and why this is so urgent, okay? So now in this part of the program, we're gonna provide the schematics uh, of the proposed facility and then um, and teach you how to uh, post your questions via Zoom in the chat function. To lead this discussion, it's my privilege to introduce uh, Deb Kuntz, Managing Principal with Core Planning Facilities and City of Lafayette Project Manager for this proposed facility, who will introduce our distinguished panel and concepts being proposed for the new public safety building and parking garage. Deb. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Will. So tonight, uh, you have heard about the vision, and next you're gonna hear from the architects, so you're gonna get to really see, right, what the building and what, what, how do you turn that vision into something that is really usable. And following the view of the schematics, we will actually have a panel discussion. So you've been seeing them on the screen, they are all here, and we'll introduce them next. But keep in mind, there will be opportunities for you to place your questions in the Q&A section of Zoom. We're gonna show you on the screen here after the schematics, so it will come shortly. If you don't know how to do it, no worries. We will show you how you can access that. And at the same time, it gives you an opportunity to really sit back and learn about the schematics and see those visuals. So tonight, after the schematics, we will have this panel who can answer all of the questions that you're sending us. And then, so with that, you've heard from two already, Mayor Ruswowski, Chief, they were both be on the panel tonight. And it takes visionary leaders to, take, to create a 50-year building, but it also takes experts. And these experts have done uh, police stations and public safety buildings in their past, and we're pleased to have American Structure Point uh, Dan Misklowski, who is the senior project and architect on this project. So you're going to get to hear from Dan here shortly because he's going to actually lead us through the schematics. We also have with him, he's got a team of people behind him who couldn't be here tonight, but we did bring Eric Lucas, MKSK, who is a landscape architect. They work on everything outside the building, also a local office here in Lafayette. We also have a, so both Dan and Eric are representing the design team. 
Now from the construction team, we have Alex Gonzalez. Alex is the Executive Vice President of Kettle Hut Construction. And then of course we have a few extra people who are here in case we need to bring them on stage. We have Dennis Carson and John Collier with the city's Economic Development Office. So again, uh, sit back. Please uh, let, allow me to introduce Dan Misklowski from American Structure Point. Sit back and really take in the schematics. And as we finish up those schematics, we're going to bring up the graphic and show you how to send your questions via Zoom. And if you already know how to do that, please feel free to start sending those. Dan. All right, thank you very much, Deb. Again, my name is Dan McCluskey with American Structure Point. Uh, I am very honored to represent the rest of the design team. As, as uh, Deb said, Eric Lucas here with me tonight. Uh, we also have uh, ADG Group, uh, which is a, a national design firm uh, specializing in public safety, uh, as, as well as some of the other logos you saw on the slide right before uh, my presentation. Uh, first, we would like to I think we lost our presentation. Okay, next slide, please. So the existing site, as the, the mayor and the chief both described this site is right adjacent to City Hall, uh, right down the street from where we're located here in the Long Center uh, at the corner of 6th and Columbia. Uh, the current uh, uh, use of the site is the police parking lot. Uh, and then further to the east, there is a historic building that we'll talk about a little bit later uh, with hopes of some uh, reuse of that, that facility's facade uh, to bring some character into the development. Uh, and continues on to 7th Street uh, that is uh, a, a historic uh, street uh, edged by a, a church on the other side. So the facility was, is going to uh, stretch all the way from 6th to 7th along Columbia uh, with its uh, backside uh, or south side adjacent to the, the residential uh, that is along um, the backside of the, the, uh, the project. Uh, we are uh, certainly adjacent to City Hall, the so the proximity to the mayor's office and other city departments is going to be cru critical to this, to this project and the success of uh, the police department and public safety amenities within this facility. Um, and it's going to be a, a, you know, a great anchor to the downtown development. Uh, you know, any strong downtown uh, has great civil, civic uh, municipal facilities, uh, and we want to create not only in this uh, uh, facility uh, something for the police department, but we also want to make sure it's, it's a facility that the public can interact with, uh, come to events, uh, and uh, enjoy it for many years to come. Next slide, please. So our design process focuses on uh, numerous things from a site selection standpoint and site uh, anal analytics. Uh, top left of your screen, you'll see the properties analysis. As I said, at the corner of 6th and Columbia is the majority of the public safety component of the facility. Uh, and then stretching through to 7th Street is going to be the parking garage component of the facility. Uh, there was many uh, iterations and design studies on how to use such a compact ur urban site uh, do we go down? Do we go mo more vertical? Do we focus the, the parking garage closer to the, the corner, or is that stretched out uh, a better use of the, the property along, set, uh, along Columbia? On the upper right, uh, you'll see a connection to the green space. Uh, of course, this is a uh, very urban site. We want to bring as much green space and as much softness to this, to this project as possible. Uh, we'll be speaking about a, a component of the project that is going to uh, enhance that green space uh, within, the, the, within the, the juxtaposition of the buildings uh, th that creates another civic space, not unlike what's on the south side of City Hall uh, and closer down to uh, Maxbox down to the south of the site. Lower left of the, of the graphic, you'll see uh, a traffic study. Uh, of course, Columbia is a one-way heading uh, westbound. Uh, 6th and 7th are uh, north-south streets uh, that have two-way traffic. Uh, so uh, what the chief was talking about earlier on how to, how to react to uh, events and how to react to calls, uh, we want to make sure that this building has 
uh, vehicular access and uh, you know the the officers have the best uh, best chance to get on the streets as fast as possible if if coming from the if coming from the central headquarters uh, most of the officers are certainly out on the streets and so the dis dispatch is going to be a, a key component to this uh, facility as well but along that Columbia Street and in a, in a matter of how you're heading westbound on Columbia we want to make sure and you'll see in the visuals uh, what does that character of that building look like? How does it reinforce the, the fabric of downtown? Uh, does, does it draw uh, materiality from other aspects of downtown? Bricks, metal panels, glass. As the mayor mentioned, there's a, 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 a strong desire to have natural light into these spaces. So we've we brought that into uh, key components of the entryway, the office space uh, within the facility. Um, so on the lower right, uh, which maybe is the most critical uh, aspect of a downtown facility is the pedestrian traffic. We want to create a, a space that uh, is inviting, uh, that connects the, the different aspects of downtown, the hotel, the, uh, the matchbox, the long center. So after events, you know, it, this facility can actually act as a, a public gathering space. In the summer months, you're going to be able to uh, relax on a, on a, uh, a plaza maybe even watch a movie on the side of the building which could be a great community asset uh, again this is this is a community building not just a police station it, it's a public safety it's it's uh, designed to in, in entice uh, interaction as the mayor was alluding to as well next slide please so when you bring all these things together uh, you've you've layered on the green space you've layered on traffic you've layered on pedestrian You've tried to f figure out how to use the property available. Uh, it, again, it's a very dense uh, site, so we, uh, we try to uh, arrange things in, in, a, in a manner that's uh, budget conscious, uh, but also fits the program needs uh, of that facility the chief uh, alluded to. Uh, we want to be, make this an efficient building so they can do their job most effectively to serve you. Next slide, please. So the floor plans of the building, you'll see a lot of grayed out spaces. That's certainly in, in some, maybe some protection of the, uh, the, the, the details of the layout of the, public, the, of the police station portion of the, com of the project. But what you see on the left side of the screen is that first floor entry. So up to the upper left where it says plans, that'll be the intersection of uh, 6th Street and Columbia. So that is your main public entry point. Uh, you'll see a couple little doors there. There's, there's actually stairs that lead up to the uh, uh, second level exterior to the building, but if you enter into that uh, kind of tan, tan color uh, space, that is the main lobby. It will be a two-story, uh, very light and opening uh, environment. Uh, so right as you come in those doors, you'll be greeted by uh, an officer uh, that is uh, working there to uh, kind of direct you. If you need public records, he'll direct you to that on the second floor. Uh, and all, but if you have an appointment with anybody within the facility, this is this is going to be your your main uh, point of contact with the with the police department. Up onto the second floor, whether and you can uh, access that second floor entrance via an exterior stairwell stairwell that we'll look at in here in a little bit, or interior to the building there will be a grand stairwell uh, or a, an elevator for uh, certainly accessible means to the to the second floor. So on that second floor is going to be a, a great community room a, uh, aspect to the project. Uh, that is going to be able to host uh, events that police require. Uh, it's going to be access to uh, any community. The city will be managing the access to that room, but it's going to be a great um, opportunity to bring other types of events to this, to this building, uh, but not, not detract from the security that the rest of the facility uh, demands. So it is separate. Uh, but also, to the right of that plan, it will be, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, a civic space on top of uh, a secure garage. So the police have the first floor of the garage, which will be secure for them, and then the public aspects of the garage will uh, continue on the second floor, be accessed from 7th Street on the east uh, through uh, metered uh, gates. Uh, daytime parking and night, nighttime and weekends will will vary uh, based on the, the way the city would like to manage that. Uh, there will be a small compo catering component to that, uh, that meeting room, divisible partition uh, to kind of separate it if uh, smaller events and groups are, are required. Next slide, please. 
Uh, so this is a four-story building. I, we only showed the, the first and second floors, the more of the community aspect of the building. The upper floors uh, have uh, further police uh, department's uh, program on those floors. But again, as we talked a little earlier, uh, we, we want to make sure this building is uh, contextually uh, connected. Uh, across you know, on the right side of the screen, you can see current city hall. On the left, you can see the corner, the building on the corner, historic building on the corner of Sixth and Columbia, just south of the Slobe Center that we're at right now. Uh, so we want to bring in uh, masonry as a as a historic element on that base, a strong base to uh, a, you know to lift up uh, conceptually a uh, the police and uh, you know all the services within that building. Uh, so on the upper floors, um, the three and four uh, will be clad in some sort of metal panel, uh, kind of light, uh, light metal panel, silverish, uh, that might have some different tones, tones to it to add some character uh, along the facade uh, with varying uh, widths and dimensions of uh, glazing to let as much natural light as we can into the facility, but also maintaining uh, as much um, energy efficiency as we can. We certainly want to make sure uh, with uh, the energy code, you know, demands on the building, but I'll just being good stewards of uh, city tax dollars to uh, maintain this facility, uh, we want to make sure that that's uh, responsive. Next slide, please. So this is a night shot uh, of the facility. Again, you know, after uh, an event at the Long Center, uh, or just uh, you know any event in downtown, we want to make sure this is a beacon uh, to the uh, to the downtown. We want to make sure it's inviting, lit. Uh, we want to make sure people feel safe in this environment. Uh, as I as I mentioned, you can kind of see it better in this uh, image, uh, kind of lighting down on that uh, raised elevated uh, platform entrance into the f first floor, and then the stairwell that kind of comes up to the. Uh, level above the parking garage, the secure parking garage, uh, that'll be a civic space that we'll speak to in a little bit. Next slide, please. This is a view heading uh, westbound on Columbia. Uh, this is just nearing the end of the parking garage, so you'll see the entrance to the parking garage. This will be accessible from the public uh, and uh, elevators, uh, accessible e e elevators to the all levels of the parking garage, but also takes you to uh, accessible entrance to that civic plaza on the uh, on the top of the uh, parking garage uh, secure entrance to the uh, police state you know, police uh, parking on this side uh, and then we're trying to create a, an element along Columbia that breaks it up uh, adds some texture visual texture visual color uh, to that base again creating a sp strong base uh, and then bringing that the, uh, the element of the police station uh, out to Columbia so it has a, a strong presence and it, you know it, the building itself is its own um, uh, landmark uh, on this corner of the corner of the city. Next slide, please. So this is uh, standing on that uh, main entry plaza, heading into the building. Inside, we're going to have a, a mix of uh, openness of the stair, uh, views into the the point where the police officer will be standing or uh, you know stationed for a greeting into the facility, stairs to the second floor uh, where public records will be. That will be where uh, you'll be able to maintain any, uh, obtain any records that, uh, that you need to from the city. And, and this, this, uh, this part of the facility, we think, you know, has a covering to it. Uh, so I think it just, again, creates that sense of protection over the, over the, the citizens and the, the, the patrons of this facility. Uh, and it's gonna be just a great uh, open civic space. Next slide, please. So right now I'd like to turn it over to Dennis Carson with the city to explain a little bit about the whys about some of these uh, strong components of the project. Thank you, Dan. We really appreciate your work on and the team's work on this project. So there's just a few things that I would like to add a little bit more information to and also reinforce some of the things that we've heard tonight about different aspects of this project. And the first one is the what Dan ended up um, ended with, with about the public parking garage component to it. And as we heard tonight, it's going to be about a uh, 450, 500 space garage. And, with, and, with, and the reason for this is, as 
Uh, there's many reasons for this new public parking garage. One is that the police station itself is going to be going on the current city parking lot, so all that parking is going to be displaced. And currently, police personnel and other people that work at City Hall are also scattered throughout downtown in other parking spaces from, again, the city lot to our public parking garage on 5th Street between 4th and 5th, and then also at the tra police training center and other places in the downtown. So we want to consolidate that parking and provide enough parking for the city employees. Also, we need to provide more parking in general for downtown, for the merchants, for the businesses, for people coming to City Hall and the police station for, for their, their different activities. So we just need additional public parking. So we were figuring around 200 spaces for the city personnel, and then the rest of the spaces would be for public parking. Also, and we've been very fortunate, there's been a lot of exciting new developments in the downtown area such as the Mark Building, a mixed-use project, um, Nova Tower, the Ellsworth which will be breaking ground. There's been also many other um, buildings that have been renovated for apartments. So there's a real interest in living downtown as well, too. So with that comes parking. So this will help um, support these current developments, but it will also help support future developments that we'll see down, down the road as well. And then lastly, we will have, there's a lot of um, activities downtown and a lot of venues for arts and entertainment. And again, as we come out of COVID here, uh, hopefully in the summer, and these uh, activities will start picking back up. We need parking for the Long Center, for Lafayette Theater, and for the many different um, activities and events that we all as a community love downtown. But again, we need parking for that. So this parking garage, we feel, is really well situated in our downtown. We really have three, we'll have three major public garages. The one, the one furthest to the west will be the county garage between 2nd and 3rd Street, and then going east, up to between 4th and 5th Street, the current city public parking garage that was built in 1995, and then we'll have this facility between 6th and 7th Street. So again, we really feel like this will really serve downtown in many different ways. And then on this slide here, we talked a little bit about this. As we said, we um, had purchased more property going east, and there's two buildings um, on, that pr on this property. And one of them, as you can see in this slide, is 625 Columbia Street which is a building that was built in the 1920s as a um, car dealership auto repair shop, and it really has a great facade on the front of it. And we really, wanted, we really wanted to not lose that and really wanted to incorporate that in some way. I do have to put the caveat on this, though, that this is, as was um, pointed out earlier, this is a overall a very expensive project, and we have a budget that we have to work with, so we have to keep within that budget. So we're, we can't uh, tonight 100% commit to be, to be able to save the facade, but we really are trying our best to and trying to figure out ways that we can do that. So when we uh, actually do the construction of, the, of this project, we will actually dismantle this front of this building and take it off site and then bring it back and reconstruct it. So as you can see, th this, with this facade, it's about a 70 foot long facade and it'll probably be about when it's done, it'll be on the side of the parking garage there and be about 10 feet deep. So it'll be a relatively small space, but we would think it'll be a really interesting space, particularly for what we en envision that it could be is a space for new and emerging businesses, micro businesses, if you will, um, these kind of pop-up shops that you've been hearing about. So people who have a product or service and they want to try out a brick and mortar space, this could be um, a space for that. So we're really excited about being able to offer that kind of space in the downtown, again, for these entrepreneurs and these people to try new things and, and do um, in this space. And it'll add some activity along this area here and more, you know, activate the street. So very um, excited about that. And go to the next slide, please. And then again, there's this um, Civic Plaza component to the project that we're also very excited about. And this is in between the parking garage and the public safety building itself and it's up elevated up on the second level. So we had this um, space in, in there, and again, we're creating, looking to create this civic space that can be used for many different functions. So you can see in the lower corner of your screen, but um, looking west into the public safety building, that is the community space right there on the inside. So that will be open to this civic plaza, so we can have more community space both inside and outside and lead those two together. So really excited about having that. And then, uh, then the other uh, image there that's looking east on the other side of the far side of the screen there is looking at the parking garage. So we're putting a screen over that, one to hide the parking garage, but also 
that screen can be used to project images. So we could, do again, project images up there or do movies or different things. Again, so we'll have, we're really excited about having this great downtown civic space that can be used by the public but also be used by um, the police personnel and other people um, and within the city. So these are particular things we want to get your reaction to tonight. And so that's when, when we go into the Q&A um, um, part of the presentation here tonight. So um, the last slide I want to show you, the next slide please, is the project schedule. And as you can see, we started this in, the su in this past summer. The design process began and we're at the schematic point here now and with this particular touch point here, meeting number one, to get provide you information and get more input from the public as well. As we move along here into the spring of 2021, there will be one or more touch points that will with the public here. But then we hope had the design completed and actually begin construction in the spring of 21. And then that will go through um, 2022 and then open it and be completed in spring of uh, 2023. Um, so with that, for the we're going to move into the Q&A part. And I want to bring back up here um, Deb Koontz. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, now is the time that if you are uh, unfamiliar with how to ask questions online, we're gonna bring up a slide here that is gonna help you uh, walk through where to find that. Now, many of you out there, I'm sure, are have used Zoom. You may use it every day in your, li in your business lives right now. Um, but it's important for those maybe who haven't been on it to just sh us to show you where you can find the Q&A button. So what you see on the screen right now is uh, right at the, if you're on the Zoom call, you'll see at the bottom it says Q&A. If you hit that Q&A di diagram there, it will actually bring up a dialog box where you can write in questions. I'm going to receive them right here on my phone. So when, I, when you send those questions in, we're gonna I'm going to receive them right here. We're going to ask them of the panelists, and then the panelists are going to answer the questions for us. Now, we know it may, you've, you've had a lot to take in, right? There's a lot that's been shown tonight, but we're going to give you a few minutes to think about what your questions are. We've already got one pending, so we know we've got a first one pending. But before we, as we do that, we thought we would prompt you with some questions just to get some initial feedback started. So again, if you are on Zoom right now, you will have the opportunity to do our interactive poll with us. And so the first questions is coming up. So it will automatically ask you those questions and you'll answer them and then it'll go directly to the next one. So you, we just want you to play along and answer the questions and then this will be a prompt that at the same time you will be able to have the opportunity to put your own questions in and we'll have, ask the panelists. So the first question, now tonight, remember you heard about pub, not just police, but public spaces, right? You heard about community rooms, you heard about plaza, maybe movie night, uh, art, community, or uh, the parking garage, being able to use that either for business or pleasure at night when you come downtown. So we really wanna know as a community member, would you spend time in these new civic spaces, including active streetscape, the plaza, the community room, and the parking garage? Would you do that? So we would ask you to, to hit yes or no. And since I'm on the Zoom as well, I'm doing it on my phone as well. Okay. We'll give you just a minute here to answer that question. And as you do, then we will go to the next question. Again, this is our interactive poll. We're going to have about six questions here, so it won't take long. We're going to do six interactive polling questions, and then we're going to get right back to that Q&A, so give you time to do that. All right, so 100% of you answered that you would use those community assets So, as a community member, so great. Thank you for playing along in the first poll result. Okay, let's go to the second question. When are you most likely to visit these spaces? Are you most likely to visit them in the morning, in the lunchtime or the afternoon time frame, or in the evening? So go ahead and punch in your answer. I'm going to do the same on my phone. So when would you most likely visit these spaces? Okay, we're going to give everybody time to fill in there, and then we'll see the results.
Okay, so let me share the results. We have 68% of our respondents saying that they would be in the evening time. So maybe using the parking garage or maybe a community event. Uh, then 59% said lunchtime or afternoon, and 14% said morning. So those are our results for those who are participating tonight. We're going to transition now to the third question, um, but I, if you are not on Zoom tonight, if you are finding us in a different way other than Zoom, just know that at the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you a link that you can go online and you can answer these questions even after the meeting. So you do not have to just be on Zoom tonight to participate in this. You're going to have an, a website at the end, that, a link that you can go to. Okay, our next question is, what type of activities would you enjoy in these spaces? Would you be sitting or relaxing, maybe eating lunch, socializing, or maybe taking part in some very distinct programmed activities if they were available? Maybe yoga or fitness or music, games. We talked about movies as well. All of those are opportunities for those to happen. So let us know which of those, one or several, that you may use for the public amenities. Okay, we'll give you time, and then as we did with the first two questions, we'll have the results here firsthand, and I'm seeing now the Q&A is starting to pop up questions, so thank you for submitting those. Okay, we have 64%, the biggest group, saying they would socialize in those areas. We have 59% taking part in the programmed activities. 23% eating lunch and 23% sitting and relaxing. So looks like we're going to have a lot of socializing and taking part in the program activities. So that's a lot to be excited about. All right, let's move to the next question then. Let's talk about the public parking garage. So it will be available for a nominal fee during regular business hours, but free for use after work hours. So if you were there tonight and you were downtown using the amenities of downtown, um, you would be able to park in the parking garage. When would you most likely use the garage? A, during regular work hours. B, after regular work hours. C, for dining, shopping, entertainment events during the day. D, for dining, shopping, and entertainment events after business hours. Or E, never. So it's kind of a long question, but again, specifically to the garage, when would you most likely use it? Okay, I'm going to put mine in. I'm participating as well. All right. So it looks like we have 57% for dining, shopping, and entertainment events. That is great for downtown. That is great for downtown. Um, we also have... Um, 29% after the regular work hours, 19% during regular work hours, and then we have some saying they will never do it as well. All right, let's move on to our next question. If you are a downtown resident, employee, or business owner, would you rent a monthly parking space? So we're trying to get a sense of if there's, a, if there's more need for dedicated spaces, right? There's plenty of space. The question is, how much should we dedicate uh, for bus local businesses downtown? So that's our question. We're going to pose that. Then I think we have, let's make sure. Then we're going to have one final question, and then we're going to transition to the Q&A. And I see about six or seven questions showing up on the Q&A. So I'm excited to see what those are. All right, so if you're a downtown resident or employee, we have 80% of the people saying no, they wouldn't, but that is a small group of people who are responding tonight. So we know that this question is going to continue to get out over social media and uh, in our virtual room, so more to come on that. Okay, let's go to our final question. What features would be important to you in a community meeting room? Uh, the ability to have movable tables, chairs, be a catering kitchen, Maybe some whiteboards so you can do interactive uh, activities with your groups. Uh, audio video projection. Direct access to the public plaza. Which of those may be really, really important to you if you were going to be utilizing that community meeting room? All right. 
So again, you see me looking down because I'm participating and, and getting our questions here as well. So, All right, this is our last question, and then we'll transition to Q&A. Okay, we have a lot of choices, but by and, by and at large, the number one need is video, audio, video. Right? The, our lives are about video and audio right now. We also have the need for movable tables and chairs, whiteboards, and then also about 40% for direct access to the public plaza. So, All right, well, that completes our public polling. Again, at the end of the presentation, we will show you a link where if you did not have a chance to participate tonight, you will be able to do that even after the meeting um, in the coming it next uh, tomorrow and tonight and in the coming weeks. So just know tonight is not your only opportunity to participate in the polling. There is opportunity coming forward. Okay, let's go. Hopefully you've had plenty of time now to enter in your question into the Q&A. And I am going to address the questions here. And first, Dan uh, McCloskey from American Structure Point, we're going to address the very first question to you. And the question is, what is the feasibility of replacing the gray black brick on this design with a red brick? Red brick would be more of a nod to the historic core without compromising the greater design or budget. And thanks to Sean for providing that. So Dan? Uh, thank you, Sean. That's a, a great question. Uh, I cer certainly think there's a palette uh, that has been you know, studied thus far. I think we can certainly look at uh, different options on the, on the brick color, as you say, that it's, it's not necessarily a budget concern, but it is a, an aesthetic uh, concern question uh, for the project. Uh, I think maybe one of the, the, the drivers of the design is a, um, a study of how variation might be able to, uh, to key in on uh, how this might, that might set this building apart, uh, but not, not necessarily uh, match but complement uh, buildings adjacent. So uh, a study of a red brick could certainly be done in the near future. Great. Okay, so let us go to a question from Susan. Susan's question is, the mayor described this as a 50-year building. If we are not at net zero by 2035, our public safety is imperiled. Will this building be constructed to lead standards Will it include rooftop solar, and will it use geothermal heating? Mayor, we want to talk a little bit about solar. And yes, uh, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for your question. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, as you know right now, the, to just get off just a little bit, the city of Lafayette, West Lafayette, Tippecanoe County, are actually putting together a climate action plan uh, together here in our community. We are all uh, committed. Uh, to doing our part to reverse uh, climate change, to look at the science. And so we have a, a community process underway right now. About this building specifically, yes, we are absolutely uh, looking at a, a for solar panels on, to, on the uh, top of the police station. Uh, we're working with two or three companies right now to get those quotes on how to do that, how to generate that energy, how to be able to use it to help facilitate uh, this building, we're certainly going to be building to high efficiency uh, standards. Uh, we, all of that is important to us, as, as Dan was talking about, too. Uh, and, and with Kettle Hut and Wilhelm, how do we make it energy efficient? But I can tell you uh, right now, we are absolutely looking at a solar array on top of the building. And uh, just so you have information, sounds like it's important to you. Uh, we're looking at putting in a solar array, array at our wastewater treatment plant and a solar array at our new, uh, one of our lift stations that we're going to be building and storage tanks. Uh, also, uh, trying to make that totally powered by solar. So, certainly this is an important area for us and we're going to look at uh, those, those opportunities. And then just to answer a couple specific questions related to that is this is not going to be a ge geothermal project. We are not the right site. You have to be the right site to have geothermal to work. So, But solar is definitely what we're looking at. All right. Um, LEED, there was also a question about LEED. So this is going to be designed to several LEED standards, but it is n we are not planning to seek the LEED accreditation. The feeling is, is that there's no, probably no reason to actually spend the money on the accreditation, but we can still design it to the LEED standards. So anything, Dan, do I need to add to that? Yeah, okay. Uh, accurate. Okay, great. Okay. Um, 
let's see. So I'm going to add a couple of questions in here, too, and I'm going to turn to Alex. So Alex, construction, right? We're in a tight urban site. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you're going to make sure everything is safe when construction is going on? Give us, give us a little glimpse into that. Sure. So uh, ourselves and our partner, Wilhelm Construction, will do a pre-construction plan, taking into account the, the one-way traffic on Columbia, the 6th and 7th Street. We'll put the barriers in place. Uh, we'll also review this with every member of our construction team as they start on site. And as the project progresses, we may change some different logistics in order to keep the public and the construction site separate and, and keep the site well lit um, and everyone safe. Okay, great, thank you. All right, let's go back to the Q&A. Uh, what building materials, so this is from John, what building materials will be used on the garage to help it blend with the Horner building? And will the doors at least be functional? This could be a small space to tell the history of the Horner building, AKA a mini museum. Dan? Dan or, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Uh, whoa. All good. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the, the materiality for the parking garage is a uh, cast in place concrete. Uh, we will uh, be uh, using. Uh, better form work to uh, get a better concrete finish on the, it'll be an exposed uh, surface, uh, have uh, uh, crash wall, so solid walls uh, where the uh, vehicles are. That's also a choice uh, made because of future development and current development on the south side of the project that, uh, you know, blocks headlights from uh, invasion on uh, residents uh, and maybe some future development on the north side of Columbia. Uh, so this certainly will be a, uh, a a cast in place project uh, and I believe the Horner building you're speaking of is a historic facility that we're uh, we're going to try to save uh, components of uh, to increase again that materiality uh, and break down that uh, the Columbia Street facade uh, and uh, certainly as as it's uh, deconstructed and reconstructed we will fix some doors I'm sure okay thanks um, that uh, that part of that question is about how it might be able to be used for some interpretive um, things, particularly with the police department or something with the city. That is something that we are considering. Um, that may be a possibility. We, we have talked about using that kind of as a display case, if you will. So it could be for interpretation of different things, particularly yeah. the history of our police department or other things. So that is an, a consideration as well. Great. Great. Thank you for that. So, Paul, thank you for the words of encouragement. Um, Paul did, uh, did not have a question, but just wanted to say, having taken the LPD Citizens Academy in 2019 and toured the current facilities, this new structure is much needed. Keep up the great work in making Lafayette a great community. So, Chief, I thought you'd want to hear that. Oh, so, I really appreciate yeah, that. Good. Um, Emily, Emily said, um, can you specify the total cost estimate? I've heard both 45 million and 50 to 55 million. And I think, Mayor, do you want to start with that? Okay. So we are, we are looking at this point, uh, I would say probably closer um, to right around the, the low $50 million mark. Uh, when we made that earlier video, uh, we were still very early into the project as we move forward. Uh, some of those numbers are getting refined. Some of them have went up. Some of them have went down. Uh, but we, we have a budget that we're working uh, with and so I would say right around that low, uh, which is all the cost. It's not that's not just the cost of the uh, police station. That's the police station, the parking garage, acquiring uh, the other buildings that we needed, uh, architectural fees, construction management fees, and those types of things. We're trying to be very transparent here. That number is all the cost uh, involved. Uh, in this project. So uh, I would still say at this point uh, with where we're at, uh, things can change. That's why we're doing this public input. But right now I would say all of that combined, we're somewhere probably going to be around that low uh, 50, 52 million mark at the high end, the 55. Great. Great. I know um, at least one other person, Amy, on the, on the uh, Q&A said she wanted some more information about stats, so Chief, will, I know that she's going to, we gave her a good website, or a good email link to uh, get some more information, but it's nice to see that folks are wanting to get more of that detail and that data that you spoke about. Okay. Um, 
In terms of Eric, let's uh, let's talk about this plaza. I know we've heard a few ideas in terms of what programming, and could you talk a little bit more details about what might actually go on in the plaza, but also some of the materials or some of the elements of it? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so the plaza is, a, is an interesting component of the project. Um, takes really good use of the space between the garage and the, the police uh, station itself and offers a new space for the, for the downtown um, community members. As you all know, we don't have a, a great amount of um, that kind of civic space downtown, so an addition like that to uh, Lafayette is certainly uh, uh, greatly um, needed and appreciated. So I think the, the current uh, concept for that space is to have a lot of flexibility. Um, certainly we want that space to be inviting um, but we also want to make sure that we are able to program it with all types of activities uh, throughout uh, the year, uh, throughout the different times of the day as well. And some of that programming we talked about earlier uh, could be more on the fitness side, it could be more on the family oriented uh, types of activities, but the space ought to feel comfortable on a daily basis without that programming. Um, but uh, it, it also, I think, is a great complement to uh, the, the community space uh, that's inside the building, and it really uh, philosophically drives home the point about um, the purpose of this um, facility yeah. and how it is really uh, about building relationships in, in the greater downtown and Lafayette area. Yeah. This is a civic space that's about community, right? This is truly a civic space about community. So uh, you may have a lingering question that you want to add to the Q&A, so we're going to give you just a minute or so more to do that. Uh, let me ask another question. I'm going to turn to Alex. Kettle Hut's a local, great construction company here locally in Lafayette. Um, and we know that at some point, probably in the springtime, we're going to talk a lot more about what, what to expect when construction really happens. But can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, will we have an opportunity to uh, communicate, uh, you know, how, exactly where you're going to start, when you're going to put the fence up, and things like that? Sure. So uh, as the chief, and I think the mayor had mentioned earlier, we want to start in the spring of 21. Mm -hmm. uh, before we start, we'll actually do a survey of the site, make sure everything is blocked off for, for public. So we'll take that drive lane down uh, Columbia, the parking lane there, we'll probably put some uh, barriers with fence on it, uh, make sure the site's enclosed before we do any of the demolition activities on site. Mm -hmm. uh, once we get going, we'll most likely work from west to east. Uh, so we'll take out the parking lot first and go down there so we can start some of the foundations on the police station and then work into the parking garage uh, in order to kind of take advantage of the weather this summer and do that work and get the structure up. So then come fall, uh, we can start getting it enclosed, then we can kind of build it out uh, next year. Great, great. Well, as we said, as Dennis said in the schedule, there is going to be another public meeting. Uh, depending on how, where we are with COVID, we may be in person, maybe we'll be video, vi visual again. Um, but uh, let's talk about another aspect of displacing parking. And so, Dennis, I'm going to let you answer this one, but specifically during construction, what are we going to do with City Hall parking? What are we going to do with the streets, tr you know, traffic? And just can you address that a little bit in terms of parking and where, what, how we'll handle that interimly? Sure, we will have to, because the police station itself is going to be on the city hall lot, so that will be displaced. So we'll have to find additional places for the uh, police personnel to park and for uh, the other civilians and people at city hall. Um, part of that, um, the police will go up to the trading center. Um, we've done that several times in the past when different things have been um, happening with the, with the police department, city hall, and other things um, downtown. We'll um, utilize our, our current parking garage as, as much as we can. Uh, we are also going to look to um, some of the private sector as well too. There are some uh, businesses downtown and things that, that have pretty large parking lots that are not always 100% uh, utilized all the time. So we're going to be looking at different relationships with them and so we can utilize their parking. So we're going to use a combination of a lot of different things as we move through this process. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of th stuff going on downtown, not only with this project, but other developments as well, too. So it will be um, a puzzle for a little while here, but I think we can put these pieces together and make it work. 
Well, and that's one of the things we want to touch m more about in the spring, right? When we, before construction starts, we're going to have another meeting. We're going to talk more about those kind of details, particularly as it gets closer and closer to construction really starting. So sit tight. There's a lot to figure out yet, but there's uh, many solutions. And I know, Gary, you sent a question through about any subsurface concerns, um, and I'll just answer that in general. But anytime we have a, a downtown urban site, there is always something down there. There is always old things that were right dumped into there from uh, years and years ago. So we want to plan for that from, from a financial perspective to make sure that we're trying to anticipate that. But we've done all the geotech testing and the environmental testing underneath the soil so that we know exactly what we're dealing with. So Gary, thank you for that question. All right, so I'm going to close the Q&A session uh, with that because I don't have any more questions. But I do want to put up the uh, final slide here in terms of what we'll do next steps. Um, Keep an eye out for the spring meeting. So we haven't set the date yet, but that is coming. But interimly, between now and that spring meeting, there are additional engagement opportunities. And I think we're going to put a slide up here. There is actually a virtual open house. So you can log into the virtual open house. You will get to see all the graphics that were shown tonight. You will ac actually even link, I think, to see this presentation. But the, it also has the polling questions and opportunity to ask questions. So we would encourage you to go to www.tinyurl.com forward slash YYZV6EOQ. It's very strange, but uh, we're going to keep that up here, and I know we're going to promote it on social media as well. You might also go to uh, the lafayette.in.gov because that's where we're going to promote, and also through social media, what that spring meeting is going to be. But we're going to leave this up, uh, this tiny URL up, so you can take either snap a picture, maybe snap a picture with your phone right now so you have that for the future. But we want to make sure you have the opportunity to, uh, to take care of that and, and, and uh, to be active and engaged even beyond this. So with that, I think I'm going to turn it back to Dr. Will. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. Uh, that's the presentation, but I don't know about you, but uh, I'm in awe of what I heard. Uh, I don't know about you, all of this great team of incredibly gifted people who designed this, they never asked me to do any of this. I mean, I, I don't know how to make a building. Who knows how to make a building? These people do. But there's something before my closing comments I want to um, offer to you, because I think it's something you don't often get an opportunity to do. All right, here are the specs for a new, very visible public uh, uh, facility. But connect it, and even if you review this recording, Go back to what Chief Flannelly did early on, laying out the fluid situation in our city and in our community over the past 25 years as the, um, as the engine that is driving the need for this, for public safety, okay? So uh, thank you uh, to, to all who've done this. This concludes the public meeting, and it's going to be just the first of, of others. Um, I want to like to thank our panelists here who've just been amazing. It's been incredible. And when you look at them, they all look so mean in their masks. But I know them all, and they all are very friendly, warm people. Uh, and it's just great to be with them, right, Chief? <laughs> okay. We will host the second meeting in 2021. Uh, visit regularly the uh, Facebook and Twitter site and, and the city's uh, website. I would like to thank individuals behind the scenes who made this possible because this presentation was just flawlessly done. Uh, thank you, uh, Steve Clank, First Tuesday uh, Communications. Brian Powell uh, from Powell Photography, David Hunky, and Patty Payne, Communications and Marketing with the City of Lafayette. Thank you for the staff and technical true crew from the Long Center for the performing arts. This just went off so well. And special thank to those attending online. And once again, the beauty of this technology is you can go back and see it again and review it and pay attention to connecting all those dots. We hope we've provided you with a valuable uh, source of information to continue conversation with friends and family on this much needed facility uh, and to enhance public safety services for Lafayette. On behalf of Mayor Rosworski, the Chief of Police, Patrick Flannelly, a good night, safe travels, and see you at the next meeting. And uh, I'm in awe. I'm just in awe. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs>